Good evening. My name is Anthony Goatley, and welcome to Scouting on Air. Our program is the first television show about the scouting movement today. On this episode, we'll find out what it means to hike in the boonies, then we'll meet some of Michigan's award-winning volunteers, we'll also see what scouts are doing to maintain Camp Aguam and Lake Orion. Finally, I'll sit down with Michaela Witkin, a scout from Saginaw who is attempting to earn a merit badge in all 50 states. Thank you for joining us. First up, we proudly present the story of Hike in the Boonies. In April, the Pond Man District held its yearly Hike in the Boonies at Big Fish Lake. The weekend campout was held from late Friday to early Sunday. The Hike in the Boonies is known for its signature 10-mile hike along with many competitive activities. Scouts arrived Friday to set up their tent and prepare for the upcoming 10-mile hike. Uh, my favorite experience at Hike in the Boonies probably was my first year when the current SBL at the time took us like 13 miles instead of doing the 10 because we took like a few wrong turns. It was a very long, tiring, but very fun time hiking. On the hike, Scouts were met with beautiful views of many lakes along the trails. The hikers were met with multiple challenges while completing the hike. One of these challenges included crossing a stream on only a log with a guide stick and most importantly your balance. Um, I think overall our troop is really excited to get out and do a hike. It's been a while since we've been able to get out and do a hike, so especially for some of our new guys who haven't been out on a hike, I think it's a really great opportunity for them to experience another side to Boy Scouts that they haven't already. After the hike, scouts returned to their camps and planned how to beat the other troops at the fire building competition. At the fire building competition, troops battled it out to see who could burn the rope in the fastest time. Here at the Barrels, there's nothing more you can really ask for. The environment here, it's like no other. Usually you're shooting in a field, but here you're shooting in the woods where it's just much better. You just get more out of the country experience, more nature, it's just better. If you're like me, you're into shooting, and it's just like an all-day shooting activity. When I get up to my stance and shoot, I think this is the time when I hit the clay bird. You get one opportunity out in the field, so here you have to think the exact same thing. Try and do a slightly more forward lean. The instructors here, there you go. they're really great. If you do not know how to shoot, they will walk you step by step through and try to get you as great as you can be. I had a lot of fun shooting today. I shot about 50 times and only missed a couple. There's so many different stands here at the Jamboree. Shooting instructors are nice. The environment's awesome. There's so many different levels you can shoot at, and if you just want to have a good time, you just hike on up here and shoot. Welcome back. Next, let's meet some of the most important and recognized volunteers in Michigan. Recently, scouts and scouters from across southeast Michigan gathered for the Pontiac Manitou District Banquet at the Oakland County Sportsman's Club, recognizing volunteers who have gone above and beyond to support young people in the program. The Silver Beaver Award is the highest honor the Boy Scouts of America in the state of Michigan can bestow on a volunteer. 
and they only award a few each year. To be considered, leaders must be nominated by other adults and have demonstrated exceptional service to scouting. Heidi Schaefsinger has been a scouter for 21 years. Her scouting positions have included den leader, cub master, scoutmaster, troop committee chair, national jamboree scoutmaster, NYLT course director, advanced leadership training chair for Camp Tatanka, and many more. She is currently registered as committee chairperson for Troop 810 in Waterford. David Weatherwax has been a scouter for 21 years. The scouting positions have included Cup Master, Crew Advisor, Council Pinewood Derby Chair, OA Advisor, Crew Committee Chair, Troops Committee Chair, and Camp Master for DBRA. He is currently registered as the Cup Master, as well as others, for Pack 7 in Auburn Hills. Uh, Dave's favorite scouting memory is uh, sleeping in the submarine with his son when he was uh, younger. <laughs> Throughout all the different programs, you see the benefit of the volunteer hours that you put in for this, and uh, that's where the value and the recognition comes in, is, is seeing the smiles and the kids learning uh, and going through the different stages of their development. The district also recognized John Pineau and Kelly Cox with the District Award of Merit. It's been a lot of work and a lot of... Um, a lot of work and a lot of uh, time uh, put in uh, working with the district and working with everybody else in the district. And uh, to be recognized is, uh, you know, flattering and, um, you know, humbling. I've been a scout since probably, I would say, eight years old, and it's probably one of the most important things I've ever done. Uh, I'm an Eagle Scout, and uh, that has uh, followed me through not just, uh, you know, not just scouting, but my uh, career as well. It's also helps bring our family together. I think everyone in our family is in scouting and it's something that we do together. And that's why I love it so much because scouting is for everybody. Finally, Waterford Central United Methodist Church's pastor, Jack Manstrick, attended to accept the Charter Organization of the Year Award on behalf of his congregation, a faithful sponsor to Troops 51B and G. The church has hosted countless district events and represents an invaluable partner to the scouting in Oakland County. Well, we allow our, um, off, uh, our uh, building at Central United Methodist Church to be used by uh, a lot of different organizations. Scouting is one of the most active uh, organizations that we have at Central United Methodist Church. We really enjoy uh, having uh, two troops, uh, 51, uh, 51 uh, girls and 51B and 51G, as you know. We, um, we also host a lot of different trainings uh, and overnights and uh, a couple different uh, type of events that, uh, uh, that have been, uh, I think, both national and district-wide, I think they've had there. So we, we really, uh, we have a beautiful building. We, we uh, like to think of it as a community center that can be used by uh, any different organizations, but uh, we're particularly proud that the, scouter, that the scouting organization uh, has uh, taking full advantage of that and we, we just love welcoming them and being a part of our church. Hello, I'm Mark Baker, the President and CEO for the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association. And I'm uh, Brad Tilden, I'm the CEO of Alaska Airlines. There never has been a better time for a young person to get involved in aviation. A lot of times we find ourselves talking about the pilot shortage or the pilot problem, but a different way to look at it is there's so many young people out there that need something to fire them up, something to get them excited about their future, their own potential, what they're capable of doing with their lives. And I just think we all have an incredible opportunity to help make these dreams come true. And the Aircraft Owners and Pilots Association, we started seeing this pilot shortage, being concerned about what was going to happen eventually with the need for more pilots. We started looking at the youth and how can we get them engaged at a much earlier age. We started out what we call a You Can Fly program. This last fall, we tested in over 29 high schools around the country. We have over 700 kids that elected to go into this program around the country free. Thank you for Alaska and others that have helped us support the idea of creating this curriculum. So it'll be both engineering, aviation in terms of becoming a pilot, 
or even becoming a drone operator. I would encourage anybody out there to get involved or start an exploring post. If you're a, a young person and you want to learn to fly, you want to be a mechanic, you want to start to think about a career in this fantastic industry, look up a local exploring post, get involved, and try to be part of one. And if you're an adult that happens to be listening to this, we'd like for you to think about actually starting an exploring post. There's so many young people out there that need a connection from where they are today to careers in this fantastic industry. So whether you're a pilot or a mechanic or an air traffic controller or some sort of management role, anything you might be doing in aviation, we'd love it if you'd think about actually starting an exploring post to connect these young people to these fantastic careers. It's probably much, much easier than you think. There are all sorts of resources at the website, exploring.org. It'll give you information on how to start an exploring post, and then we can build more that will give people practical, hands-on experience that will balance what Mark and AOPA are gonna help teach the young people in the classroom. Exploring, discover your future. Thank you to all scouting volunteers for your service. Next up, we'll go back to Camp Agawam and see what's being done to preserve the park. The Dragon Scout Roundup is basically a weekend of service for the community. We come here to Agawam because this is a place where scouts have been camping for decades. And when the township bought it, we now had the opportunity to do service projects in it because you can't do service projects in scout property. One of our biggest ongoing tasks, especially right in this area, has been brush clearing. Uh, we've done painting benches and picnic tables. Cub Scouts and younger youth do a lot of mustard garlic pulling and other invasive species, generally clean up litter in the camp. We go through the campsites and spruce them up Basically, it's a lot of, of uh, low-level maintenance and cleanup. When I was creating the ticket, I needed five goals, and one of them, service has always been a big part of scouting, so a weekend of service for youth in the community seemed like a really good idea at the time. And as I say, once the township bought this camp, we knew what kind of work it needed, it was just a, a, a perfect situation to combine the service and uh, a good spot for the community. Since we've done it, the last count, we've put in over a thousand hours of work into this camp for the community. You remind me of all my lives. You could time me to the moon and back. We're rewinding just like me. Chance just to watch it over again Take me back, take me back to the place where I, where I first met you Feeling cheap but not mine for you Take me back, take me back to the place where I, where I first met you Feeling cheap but not mine for you In the end, we blossom, we come alive We're driving all through the night Our next guest has visited 32 states and has a goal to earn a merit badge in every state. Kayla Witkin, I think a question on almost everyone's mind is how much time and effort is spent on planning these trips? So it always depends on where I'm going. Uh, sometimes I have to reach out to merit badge counselors, other times they reach out to me. Uh, a little bit of extra effort is spent on planning, doing family activities uh, on our trips and figuring out what merit badge counselors offer um, based on what I already have and don't have. Okay, um, so of these trips you've been on, what was your favorite? So my favorite was definitely going to Mississippi. I went to a camp called Salmon Scout Reservation, or V-Bar, um, and I got to do lots of different new things. Uh, I have staffed, that is the first camp that I've staffed. I staffed their winter camp, um, and it's one of my favorite summer camps that I've been to, and I'm returning this summer staff as well. Now, how did this whole thing come about? Why did you want to do a merit badge in every state? So I have a friend named Eddie Campo, and he is the national bosun for the Sea Scouts. Well, he was, and he joked around um, 
in the beginning of girls being allowed into scouting because he was trying to earn, trying to go to all the different states and a couple different countries as the bosun. And he joked about me earning a merit badge in every state and I took it to heart. And here we are. Now, that's quite a story. What is the most exciting merit badge you've done? Um, I actually have two that uh, I'd like to talk about. The first one was my Citizenship in the World merit badge with uh, Dr. Goodwin, who works for NATO out in Belgium. And it, I did it over Zoom. It was definitely the most interesting merit badge I've done because I got to learn more about the specifics of those international relationships. Um, and I got to talk about something with somebody who I wouldn't normally get to talk to, which was kind of interesting. Um, and the other was my law merit badge. I did it with two JAG attorneys um, that work for the Army that were deployed at the time over Zoom as well. And it's what got me into the idea of going into law as a JAG attorney. That's cool. It's glad, glad to hear that you know what you want to do with your life. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Uh, what is the most challenging part about these trips? The most challenging part is definitely sitting through all of the travel time. Uh, it sometimes can be just a huge pain. I'm in the car a lot. Um, and it's, it's definitely not the most fun part either. <laughs> <laughs> now, what's the most rewarding part? The most rewarding part of my trips is definitely the people that I meet. Um, I make so many amazing connections and amazing friends. Um, I'm still in contact with lots of people I've met on my journey. So, so our producer is from Florida. I hear you have a Florida woman story for us. Oh, I guess I do. Um, so I visited Florida. I was doing my merit badges, um, and I was staying with my grandfather. And there were lots of little lizards that I now know are green and old. And I really wanted one. And I spent hours trying to catch one, and I couldn't. So my grandpa went ahead and caught one for me. And I kidnapped it and brought it back to Michigan with me. And it lived for two years. Her name was Turkey. I caught her on, well, my grandpa caught her on um, Thanksgiving. So I named her Turkey. And she was a really cool lizard. She lived a really happy life. So, How big was this lizard? Um, without her tail, she's probably like that big. With her tail, she's probably like that big. She was just a tiny little girl. Okay. Now, what state is next on your list? The next state on my list is Alaska. I'm going there very soon, and I'm going to be doing the fishing merit badge and the dog care merit badge. The dog care merit badge will be con uh, completed over Zoom. Um, and I'm also going to be going to Washington on that trip and completing the sustainability merit badge. Now, is there any remaining merit badges that you're excited for? I'm really excited to do the horsemanship merit badge. I'm going out to Montana um, to meet with a ranch owner and ride horses through the mountains, which sounds amazing. Now, once you're done with all 50 states, how many merit badges do you think you'll have? So, thinking based on only the 50 state merit badges, I am probably going to have around 75 to 100 merit badges from that journey itself, because um, there's some states where I've earned multiple merit badges in or I've gone to summer camps. Um, but I hope that after this, I might have the time to earn all of the merit badges, or at least even more of them. And for the time being, I'm still earning merit badges back home. So. Now, you're a life scout at the moment. Do you have any plans for Eagle? So I'm actually currently working on my Eagle Scout project. Um, I'm working with the Mid-Michigan Children's Museum to create an exhibit on the environment and conservation in the Outdoor Code, and a little bit of Leave No Trace. Um, so I'm hoping to create some signs to teach children about what they can do to keep their environment safe. Uh, I've already gone in and done all of the man work. I've replaced a lot of dirt and mulch with brand new grass, um, and it's growing beautifully. So we'll see how it goes. Well, we look forward to seeing the results. Thanks. For Scouting on Air, this is Michaela Witkin, and I'm Anthony Goatley.
Thank you so much for joining us. We hope you enjoyed. This has been Years in Scouting, Anthony Goatley.